Good afternoon. I'm delighted to be joined by fellow champions of freedom. We have gathered here this afternoon, hastily I might add, but I'm delighted that we can be joined by our United States Senator, Kirsten Gillibrand, our Attorney General, Tish James, and our Majority Leader, Andre Stewart Cousins, as well as advocates, champions from Planned Parenthood, Kristen Dart from Planned Parenthood, Empire State X, and also a, a number of other members of my administration. My question is this, when will this stop? Women across this nation are sick and tired of being treated as though we have no rights. Started with Dobbs, not even a year ago, when they wiped out all the gains that women had fought for, my mother's generation fought for, and that my generation and my daughter's generation perhaps took for granted the right to have a legal abortion in the United States of America. With the Dobbs decision, it's hard to imagine it could get much worse. But what we saw this week was a very dark week in the history of our nation, in the history of women across this country. So I would say this, from the extremist mega judge in Texas, who thinks he knows more about science and facts and research than the entire thousands of workers at the FDA, to last night, in the dead of night, under the cover of darkness, with the stroke of a pen, what the governor of Florida did was basically reduce women to having no rights at all. Because the right to an abortion is a fundamental right. And now, for them to say an abortion is only legal up to six weeks, well, I can speak about this because as a mother, as a pregnant mother, I didn't even know I was expecting the first three months. So six weeks is just absurd, an absurd standard to have imposed on women. And Florida was one of the few places in the South where women in search of an abortion could find a safe harbor. That harbor has been shut down. So we're sick and tired of men telling us what to do. These anti-abortion extremists all across the nation are energized. They're empowered. They think the narrative and the law is now on their side. It may be our bodies, but they say it's their choice. Here in New York, as the governor of the state that is the birthplace of the women's rights movement, we have a special responsibility conferred on all of us as leaders to continue to fight for these rights and do anything in our power to give hope to women across the nation who are now oppressed. We're demanding with one united voice and saying we'll always remain a sanctuary for women's rights, that abortion will remain safe, accessible, and legal, and ensure that we'll focus on our providers as well. In the aftermath of the Dobbs decision last June, we allocated $35 million knowing that New York would become a safe haven haven, that people from other states would come in search of their legal rights in our state. We also mandated insurance companies doing business in New York cover abortion. And I signed a package of bills supported by our legislature that protected providers and patients. But I will say this, all these latest attempts to tear down our resolve, to wear us down into submission. That will never happen. We are emboldened. We are fighting back. And I want women across this country to know we'll be there to support you, whatever we can do. And even when it comes to what the judge in Texas did, questioning the FDA's approval of an abortion medication that was used and safe for 23 years, we in the state of New York will make sure that this is available for the women of our state in case that decision stands. We'll also, if that decision stands, 
allocate an additional $20 million because what will happen is if this medication is taken off the shelves and no longer available for providers to give to patients, there will be more procedures as opposed to the option of having a medication abortion. More procedures will cost more money. More people will be coming to New York. So we're proposing that if that ban stands, we'll allocate another $20 million in addition to stockpiling the medication abortion. We're also going to require, we're working with the legislature, and again, I'm grateful to have Andre Stewart-Cousins here, our leader, and Senator Webb, who's a champion as well, fighting in the Senate, as well as Assembly Member Pat Fahey. I thank them for joining us today. We're working with the legislature to provide, require private insurance to cover medication abortion when it's prescribed off-label. And we refuse to go backwards. Wherever they turn, whatever stroke of a pen where they write out women's, wipe out, try to out women's rights, we'll be there to counter. We'll be there to stand strong. Because we know what real American values are. People love to talk about American values. They're about freedom. Freedom means a lot of things to a lot of people, but I'll tell you what it means as a woman. It's the freedom to decide what you want to do with your own body. When, if you choose to have a family, that will occur. These are personal decisions between a woman and her doctor, and we are sick and tired of men, whether they're on the Supreme Court, a judge in Texas, or a governor of another state, taking away these rights. American values are freedom, autonomy, and equality. And I can't think of another instance in American history where men have been singled out, denied any kind of their rights, but somehow it continues to happen to women. But we refuse to go backwards. As I mentioned, this is New York, the birthplace of the women's rights movement, the place where the Statue of Liberty stands tall in our harbor. We will be that beacon of hope that guiding light to bring others to our state when necessary, but let the women of this state know, as long as I'm the governor of the state of New York, your rights are protected here. We will never stop fighting for what's right. We'll always be that place to come. We have so many outstanding partners in this fight because it's taken on so many faces in the courts, in legislatures, and on our shelves of medication. One of our greatest champions is Kirsten Gillibrand, our senator in Washington. She is out there leading this charge at the federal level because she knows they will not stop and there is a national ban on abortion. So we're grateful to have her as a New Yorker and a champion in defense of women's freedoms. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. Well, I want to thank Governor Hochul for her extraordinary and strong leadership, her vision for how she can protect the freedoms of women across this country is inspiring and hopeful for so many. So thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Reproductive freedom has been under attack intensely since Roe v. Wade was overturned. The Dobbs decision didn't just make it impossible for women to get reproductive care. The Dobbs decision denied women the right to privacy. 22 states have followed that court's ruling, denying women reproductive freedom. And this Texas decision goes the next step, further defining what the denial of right to privacy looks like. It means no right to privacy in the mail. Imagine what that would mean to you. Imagine that you, any person in this country, has no right to privacy in the mail. The government can read your mail. The government can stop your mail. The government can do whatever they want with your private information. This is an outrage. This decision is not going to stop here. The next type of medicine they will deny why wouldn't they deny your reproductive care for birth control? Why wouldn't they deny the ability to have vaccines? If any judge 
And this Texas judge in particular can decide based on his or her view of the world what's right for someone's body, what's right for their medical care. There's no stopping what this line of jurisprudence could cause, the harm it could cause all across this nation for patients. Make no mistake, this is an all-out assault on women's reproductive freedom, our civil rights, our civil liberties, and our right to privacy. Many colleagues across this country, both our state colleagues and our federal colleagues, are fighting back. I have just signed on to an amicus brief signed by 50 other senators. This amicus brief is going to give voice to women and families across America that we will not stand for the eradication of our right to freedom and our right to privacy. Women have a right to reproductive care, life-saving care, and we are going to fight this in every court and in every venue that we can find. Because American women and their families deserve freedom and privacy. Thank you, Senator. At this point, I'd like to welcome the Majority Leader of the United States, or the United States, <laughs> I think that'd be Chuck Schumer. Uh, call up the Majority Leader of the New York State Senate, Andre Stewart-Cousins. Thank, Thank you so much, Governor. And it is, uh, again, every time I'm here talking about this issue, uh, especially in this, the 50th anniversary of Roe, and realizing that instead of uh, actually celebrating the rights of women in this country, we are lamenting the idea that we, as Senator Gillibrand uh, uh, so eloquently said, are being denied right after right after right. And as our governor said, uh, New York is not that place. We've been very, very clear. At the beginning, even pre-Roe v. Wade, New York was a leader. In 1970, we led. And I am very happy to be in a state, especially since everyone seems to be on a national level and think that's what the Dobbs decision was supposed to be, something that said, oh, states' rights, states' rights. Who would have thought that we would have actually been celebrating states' rights? But the reality is that in this state, with this leadership, with these allies on every level of government, with, with my uh, colleagues in the assembly, uh, under the enlightened leadership of male, uh, uh, Speaker Hasty, thank you so much for being here, Assemblywoman of AHE. You could tell them, I shouted them out. <laughs> And of course, uh, Senator Webb is here because we actually have a women's issues committee that she heads up. But the reality is that we have watched our fight to have our rights and we are watching them being eroded. But the fact that we are able to remember how we fought to achieve them I hope empowers us and emboldens us in ways like never before to not let us slip backwards. Because left unchecked, they believe that they have the momentum. They do not. When I was a pregnant teenager in 1970 in New York, they so said I never knew who allowed for the right to abortion. Who would have thought fast forward that I would be standing in a position to make policy with, yes, the first female governor, and yes, legislature that is between 30 and 50% female to fight back. We can do this. We can be a beacon. We can be champions. We could show people how it's done. And we will continue to work with allies who understand that we just don't lose a little bit of freedom. We lose it all on every level if we sit quietly by and watch it go away. This is not the place. New York is not that place. And why is it not that place? Because not only do we have fighting US senators and fighting governors and fighting uh, legislators, we also have an attorney general that wakes up every morning, 
to do the fighting on behalf of New Yorkers. When we send our legislation there, we know we have a defender and a champion. And I'd like to introduce Attorney General Letitia James. The decision to have an abortion is deeply personal and complex, I know. And no man, whether they sit in a courtroom or they sit in a legislative building, should substitute their judgment, their ideology, their religious beliefs over that of individuals who have engaged in research and facts and science and experience. Margaret Sanger once said that no woman can call herself free who does not control her own body. No woman can call herself free until she can choose whether she will or will not be a mother. We stand here today because we are witnessing men strip away that right they are also stripping away the right to vote, the right to love whoever we want, and the right to bear children. And so as Eleanor Roosevelt once said, it's up to the women. It's up to the women to march. It's up to the women to vote. It's up to the women to raise their voices in opposition to individuals who seek to take away our autonomy, our agency, our authority, our control. Thank God we have a governor, a governor who just happens to be a woman, but a woman who has led this state and a woman who recognizes a woman's right to choose and privacy rights and who actually believes in protecting all of the rights that I just outlined. outlined the right to make our own choices over our own bodies. And I want to make clear that abortion is still legal in the state of New York. And as long as we have Governor Hochul, it will remain legal. And as long as I, have the, as, as long as I am the Attorney General, I will use the law both as a sword and as a shield against any individual who seeks to strip away that basic right because an abortion is health care and it's critical and it will disproportionately affect low income women and women of color. So no ban will ban abortions. It will ban safe abortions. That's what it will do because individuals with means will travel to other states and unfortunately low income women and women of color will put their lives at risk. And that's why we stand together. We believe that ensuring all residents are safe and that all of them have access to health care. But yet, but once again, we find ourselves at the whim of individuals who put politics over the lives of individuals. This was never a debate about science because more than 20 years of medical research has proven that Medicaid, medication abortion is safe and effective. From day one, this has been a politicized effort to control our bodies, to undermine reproductive health care, and chip away at our rights. But we're tough, and we're not going away. And we're going to stand together arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, and we're going to stand up to those individuals who would treat us like second-class citizens. And that's why, as the Attorney General, we have filed briefs in support of the FDA. We have joined with the Department of Justice seeking an emergency stay in the, before the United States Supreme Court. And that's why we are confident and hopeful that here in the state of New York and all across this country, women who unfortunately do not have access to abortion, our borders are open. Our doors are open, our hospitals are open, our agents, our clinics are open, and we are here to serve you because we are led by women who understand what you're going through and who will be there for you each and every time. Thank you.
Thank you, Madam Attorney General and all of their speakers here today. Uh, you referenced the right to vote, the need to vote. I want to remind everyone, I'll do it many more times, we all are, between now and the next election in 2024, 2024 election. The right to an abortion will also be on the ballot in the state of New York. The legislature has passed a constitutional amendment called the Equality Amendment, but basically an ERA-type amendment that'll actually ensure not just the right to an abortion, but the, re the right to have access to reproductive health care in all of its shapes and forms. So I think that's something we should start letting people know now, that never take anything for granted, and that'll be a motivating factor to get people out to vote in 2024.